Hello everyone, this is part two of the video I was just making. As I was saying, they're taking little bits of history and teaching them long about it. My friend's children had homework to do and the teacher told them to write an essay on 10 ways that the Mexican army was legally, morally, and morally justified in killing the everyone at the Alamo. Do another part of the essay on what the people at the Alamo, why they were invaders, what they had done, Ill, why they were illegal aliens in that country, and why the Mexican army was legally justified in slaughtering them. Now, my understanding of history through not through learning and reading about it is that what happened at the Alamo was war. At the time, Texas was fighting for its independence. Davy Crockett, Jim Bowie, Tra James Travis, you know, and a bunch of others went there to help fight, help Texas fight and gain its independence. And they were cut off from help in the Alamo by General Santa Ana's army. And he gave them a chance to flee. However, they said that they would rather die then leave. Because that is how much they understood freedom to mean to them. That's deep. Uh, after that happened, when, and this is another part that they had to write about. It said, why if Sam, General Sam Houston was alive today, write in an essay, you know, write another part of the essay on why if General Sam Houston was alive today, he would be on trial for war crimes and crimes against humanity for his actions at the Battle of San Jacinto. Now, people who don't, for people who don't know, the Battle of San Jacinto happened exactly four days or so after the Alamo. And Santa Ana's army was sleeping. It was early in the morning. A scout came upon him, went back, told General Sam Houston, General Sam Houston shouted to his guys who were tired and wanting to sleep. Remember with the Alamo. In other words, remember how they did not give our friends any quarter at the Alamo. How they did not take any prisoners at the Alamo. Men, women, and children were killed at the Alamo. And they went in screaming, remember the Alamo. And they beat General Santa Ana and took his wooden leg. Which I think is funny. <laughs> Spoil of war. And Texas gained its independence. It's that simple. <coughs> but this is just one instance where the teachers are, show, are taking it snidbit of history 
and teaching it all kinds of crazy wrong. I. They do take some things from history and teach it right. The fact that the Nazis were bad. However, they also teach that the Holocaust didn't happen the way that the Jewish people say it did. And the teachers also teach that if it wasn't for the UN and America making the Palestinians have to leave their land, there would be no Israel. Again, if you look at history, that's not so. Yeah, for generations and thousands of years, they had no land, but then they did. Yes, it happened with the UN. Yes, it happened after World War II, but it's more complicated than what they're trying to make it. They're simplifying it and teaching it wrong and dumbing it down. And teaching our children. What we have to do as parents is make sure that our kids know the truth about history. The truth about anything that they learn in school. We, have, we as parents have to show them, okay, this is what your teacher is teaching you. But this over here, this is what really happened. This is the whole story. It's the only way our children will be smart well-informed, intelligent, and able to compete on the global market. Now, another way that the globalists and the communists, the democratic socialists, the socialists, democratic communists, whatever they want to call themselves now, are brainwashing our children, and this is the one where they that they are doing the most with the mentally handicapped children. They are going and telling mentally handicapped children, you are not a boy, you are a girl. So, you can have your penis chopped off and become a girl, and mommy and daddy can't say nothing. They have to let you do this. That's not right. <clears throat> First of all, this transgender is another form of the mental disorder, body dysmorphia syndrome. In my book, there are two genders, male and female, if you look at nature, okay, nature is a perfect example, there are two genders for procreation, one is male, one is female, the male is always the more aggressive, the big, generally speaking, the bigger, the stronger, and the female are a little smaller, a little weaker because they have strength in a different way. They have strength to bear the children. And the men have strength to go out and bring home food. It's that simple. But this is what they're doing to our mentally handicapped. Now what that's going to do is that is going to sterilize our handicap. It's going to sterilize parts of our races. They won't come right out and say that that's the reason they're doing it. Because if they say, oh yeah, we're, we're going to have all the men, we're going to make sure all the mentally handicapped get sterilized. Everybody will be up in arms, ready to fight. No, you're not. Those are my kids. You're not doing that to my kids. I'll fight you. I'll kill you. In a heartbeat. <coughs> so what they do is they play on words thinking everyone's asleep. Everyone's stupid. But people like me, 
other patriots like myself and other people like myself who are awake and who look and see and learn are on to them. Alex Jones, Gary Franchisi of the Next News Network, Lisa Haven, we're on to you. All right. Even the retired Marine is on to you on that. We're not stupid. We see what you're doing. We're on to you. My advice is to quit while you're ahead. But that's what they're doing. And if you notice, a lot of the people that, a lot of the kids, because that's what they are, the college age kids, that are saying, I'm transgender. Most of them are white. Think about it. Most of them are white. Why is that? Because the teachers and everyone in charge at the schools, the teachers, professors, principals, have all taught them that white is bad. You are not. If you sometimes feel like dressing up, if you felt like dressing up as a girl when you were a child, then you're transgender. Or a gender binary, which all works towards them wanting to have sex with the same sex that they are, which leads to the sterilization and ex eventual termination and extinction of a race, in this case, the white race. That's not good. Hitler tried it with the Jews. We all know what happened then. The world rose up, whooped his ass. And moved on. You know. To get off topic a little bit here. Well not really because the English tried it. Through papers and stuff like that. In other ways. Through talking to our children and all that. Back in the 1700s. And we stopped them. We rose up. We said, listen, you SOBs are taxing us and we're not even represented. You're telling us that we can't do this. You're telling us we can't do that. You're killing us over having any, some money. You're telling our children that they can't do this. And they were even trying to limit guns back then. They're trying to take our guns even back then. And that right there, which taking your guns back then is how you put meat on your table. You needed your gun. It's how you put meat on the table. Protected your home from people who wanted to hurt you. The country got together. Made the Bill of Rights. Actually, we made the Declaration of Independence. Made the Bill of Rights, made the Constitution, and went to war. And in 1776, we started fighting. Actually, we ended in 1776. It actually started in 1772. 1771, 72, something like four or five years of bloody battle. And yeah, at the beginning, England, who had the bigger navy, the bigger army, was kicking our rear. It wasn't until we stopped fighting their fight and started fighting our fight, which was the hit and run strategy. We'd hit them hard, we'd take out their officers, take out a bunch of their people, and then we'd run on, we'd run to the next place where we could re up with ammo and supplies. And in so doing, we ended up winning. 
We ended up buying enough time, fighting the ground troops to the point where the French could come in with their boats. And they were still outnumbered. The French were outnumbered like two, three, or four to one boat. Like two, three, or four English for one French boat. And they came in and they helped us crush that Navy. You see, we were a small, determined group. And we crushed the most powerful Navy and Army of the world, in the world at that time. Pretty cool when you think about it, huh? But why? Because we wanted our freedom. What's going on today? Again, they're trying to take guns and our freedom and take our children away by brainwashing them and trying to wipe out a whole race of people. Well, not to go on a rant like Alex Jones would, but if they keep that up, 1776 will commence again. We will fight you. We will win. You will lose. We will totally and utterly kick your rear all over this planet and back again just to prove our point. If you try to take our kids and you try to take our foods, 1776 will commence. And we will win. For this small group of people who's determined will destroy a large group every day of the week. America had it shown to us in Nam. We were overconfident. Oh, we're America. We're the biggest army. We're the biggest navy. We're the biggest air force. We're the baddest people on the planet. We'll walk in there and just mop it up. And we went in and we came out with our tail between our legs. Look in our wounds, because we got our asses whooped. In Korea, basically the same thing. We didn't lose, but we, we fought to a, a standstill. Again, Korea, Nam, part of the reason, because our government tied our soldiers' hands. See, 1776, World War One, World War Two. The Civil War, the Spanish-American War, the French-Indian War, they all have one thing in common. Government stayed out of war. They sent their troops in and told them, when, do whatever you got to do, when. As a result, they did. We won. But they're brainwashing our children by not teaching things like that. Alright, but what they are teaching is that guns are evil. White people are evil. White people with guns are racist and evil and Nazis and should be shot or beat up. And that's wrong. You lay a gun on the table, it doesn't do nothing. You pick that gun up and pull the trigger, it does something. It's not the gun that's wrong. It's not the gun that killed that person. It's the human that wielded the tool that did it. Simple. Alright. And I know it's getting a little off topic, but these things I feel need to be said. Sorry, I'm a little tired. But we need to understand that if we let the globalists brainwash our children, we lose everything. Because our children will grow up 
as socialists, and they will be the generation that takes everything away. And 20, 30, 40, 50 generations later, people will be saying, gee, remember when this country had the ability to tell the president to go fuck himself and not get locked up? Or remember when we had the ability to walk down the street and not get picked up and carted away by someone in a van and just, you're gone, the government's picked you up, you disappeared? Remember when we had the right to carry a gun and remember when we had the right to vote and do all these other cool things that we don't have the right to do now? Then, the socialist, the communist, will admit, hopefully, oops, we fucked up, too late by that point. I am willing to listen to anyone's point of view, whether I agree with you or not, I will listen. But, I will ask questions when I, I can, and I will want you to listen to me 